little bit of rain just helping with the parched earth. Thank you, Holly. So blessed to have Holly as our permanent musician. Welcome. Welcome all. Welcome to the light and love that is unity of Lawrence. And in unity, we begin everything with prayer. So let's take a centering breath and open to the divine in all of us as we listen to this prayer. On this day, we dedicate our hearts to peace on earth. We appreciate each individual's spiritual journey and the abundant blessings bestowed upon us. In unity with all who seek to express freedom, joy, and transformation, we welcome our divine inheritance as creators. We come from love, as love, to be love. In harmony with this truth, we live to the best of our ability with a peaceful mind, a peaceful heart, and a peaceful spirit. And so it is. Amen. Our prayer chaplains are trained to hold sacred space and pray with you one-on-one. -on -one. So if there's anything in your heart to be held in prayer, we invite you to see our prayer chaplain today, Karen Langsford. There you are. I was looking for your beautiful space and spirit. And so we, you're welcome to see Karen right over here after the service. Well, we also love to sing, so it's that singing time if you'll rise and sing and join with Holly in All That I Am.
sent my mind belong to eternal time. My words and my song, you're writing them all along. And I know that it's true when all that I am comes down to you. And I know that it's true, I know that I can rely on you. All that I am, all that I am, all that I am, God, I give it to you. All that I am, all that I am, all that I am, God, I give it to you. an affirming way to breathe in the gift of being who we are, all that we are. And so let us affirm together unity's founding principle. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, God, the source of all good. And our Unity of Lawrence vision statement, United in divine love and joy, we celebrate a peaceful and abundant world for all. And our Unity of Lawrence mission statement, we are a thriving spiritual community, sharing love, building bridges, and inspiring transformation. Well, buckle up because Stephanie Bland's about to transform. We love our Stephanie. Thank you, Stephanie, for being here today with us. Good morning, and it is good to be home. For those of you that are new, this was home for me for many years, so it's good, always good to be back. The prayer. I pray you'll be our eyes and watch us where we go and help us to be wise in times when we don't know. Let this be our prayer. When we lose our way, lead us to a place, guide us with your grace to a place where we'll be safe. I pray we'll find your light and hold it in our hearts when stars go out each night remind us where you are let this be our prayer when shadows fill our day, mm -hmm. lead us to a place, guide us with your grace, give us faith so we'll be saved. A world where pain and sorrow will be ended and every heart 
that's broken will be mended and we'll remember we are all God's children reaching out to touch you reaching to the sky we ask the life become And watches from above. We hope each soul will find oh, another soul to love. Let this be our prayer. Just like every child. with your grace give us faith so we'll be safe need to find a place guide us with your grace give us faith so we'll be Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you for sharing your light. And now, another light to welcome. Reverend Jennifer Hutchins is the founder of Unity Arts Ministry. In addition to guest speaking, she facilitates creative workshops, classes, and retreat experiences, both online and in person. Her mission is to inspire self-reflection and personal transformation through spiritual principles and the healing power of art. Welcome, Reverend Jen. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Stephanie, for the beautiful music. So I brought uh, one of my um, trusty art friends with me. This is my art journal. Um, one of, I have like a stack of them at this point. I've been doing this since 2005. Um, and I'm going to share a little bit about this with you today as a tool for increasing your own connection with divine wisdom. So sort of a way to pray with crayons, if you will. Um, literally, uh, <laughs> there's crayons, mixed media, all sorts of fun things in here. Because I think, and, and actually Stephanie touched on this a little bit in the song too, that as children, not that I see any in the room, <laughs> been told not to call any, but as children, right, we are naturally connected to all that is around us. We are naturally connected to ourselves. We are naturally connected to our inner wisdom, our intuition, our own sense of guidance in the world. We are all born with this. This is a gift that we are born with, a spiritual divine gift. And then as we get older, we start listening to other people judging our gift, and we start sinking back just a little bit, just a little bit, till we eventually get to this point in our lives where we're like, you know, something new comes at us, and we're like, oh, I don't know the right thing to do here. I don't know the right decision to make. And so we poll our friends on Facebook for the right way that we should respond in our own lives. You're laughing because you think I'm just funny, right? It's just me. <laughs> just me. Yeah. We seek wisdom in books. We seek wisdom in church. We seek wisdom on podcasts and other people's ideas all the time. 
we get out our Ouija boards and our pendulums and we call on our spirit guides. We do all these things before we go, hey, me, what should I do here? We call on all these things outside of ourselves because we forgot that that divine wisdom is within us. Whatever guidance we need, whatever guidance we are seeking out, that we're looking out into the world for somebody else to tell us what to do with our lives, we don't need to do that. The first thing we need to do is trust ourselves. Become like our own inner child. Become like the children that we were brought into this world to be, to trust ourselves and to live into that. Now, those of you that have known me for a while, you're going to be shocked by this, but my son recently turned 14, right? For those of you, like, he was this big when I first came here. They keep growing. Yeah. So we're starting high school um, in a few weeks. So just to, like, really put that into perspective for everybody where we're at. But it has been you know, personal goal of mine, not only to help other people to tap into their own spiritual gifts, but to continually give him the space to tap into what feels right for him, to listen and trust his own guidance. And so when we were out at a park a few weeks back doing an art activity, of course, what else will we be doing? (laughs) So while we were waiting for our turn to play with the paints, they were still setting up, my son came up to me and he said, my intuition is telling me that I should go look for a particular plant because I know that it has some healing properties and I have a feeling that somebody is going to need it today. And he said, I don't know if it's for myself or for somebody else. I just have this feeling. Have you ever had feelings? Something's going to happen. I should be prepared. So he went and figured out where this plant was that he was looking for, came back, said, I know where it is, so when it happens, I'm ready. Well, about an hour into our experience, a little boy tripped and fell while chasing a kite and scraped his knee. My son, like fastest I've seen this kid run in a long time, (laughs) he ran, grabbed what he needed, ran back and handed the child's mother a, a leaf from this plant, she recognized it, she honored it, and she said, thank you so much, that's exactly what we need right now. And so not only did he trust his intuition, did he trust me enough to feel safe to tell me that he had an intuitive awareness, he also trusted this parent who then acknowledged the importance of the gift that he just gave her. That is how we build our trust in our own intuition. When we get that intuitive aha, right, what does that feel like to you, right? Some people feel it in the gut. Some people get like, my arm hairs will stand up when I get like this, I pay attention to this kind of moment. Some people get like head to toe chills, pay attention. For some, it's just like a quiet whisper that whisper of divine wisdom, of intuition, of knowing ourselves so fully that we trust ourselves and we trust that spirit, that divine light within us. Now, sometimes we get those little little knowings and we try to brush them off because somewhere along the way, somebody said, oh, don't trust that, right? Or that's kind of a crazy idea. What are you going to do with that leaf anyways, right? Whatever it is, whatever your story was, And we start believing the outside world, thinking, I don't have this gift. It doesn't exist. But it never went anywhere. It never went anywhere. So if you've sort of stuck your intuition, you know, on a shelf somewhere, I hope that today we're going to help you draw that back out, draw that divine wisdom back out, and draw your faith in that divine wisdom back out. We're going to talk a little bit about what is this intuition, this divine wisdom that I'm talking about. How have others defined it? Because, you know, we have to look out there a little bit. It verifies what we feel inside sometimes. We're also going to look at where you feel those experiences in your life and when you pay attention and when you ignore them and why are you ignoring them. 
And then finally, I'm going to give you some tools, give you a little preview here, that you can use to help develop your connection with your own divine wisdom. Ready? <laughs> so I want to start off with the wisdom of Scripture. Quite literally, the wisdom of Scripture. The wisdom, the book of wisdom. Now, if it's been a while since you've heard this or you've never heard this before, I want you to put on sort of that fresh approach to this. Because really, what we are listening to is poetry. It is a visual. So it could even be a guided meditation to imagine this imagery. This is from Wisdom 6, 12 through 16. Wisdom is radiant and unfading, and she is easily discerned by those who love her and is found by those who seek her. She hastens to make herself known to those who desire her. One who rises early to seek her will have no difficulty, for she will be found sitting at the gate. To fix one's thought on her is perfect understanding, and one who is vigilant on her account will soon be free from care, because she goes about seeking those worthy of her, and she graciously appears to them in their path and meets them in every thought. She graciously appears to them in their paths and meets them in every thought. This is wisdom we're talking about, sometimes personified by the name Sophia. And I love this idea, this personification of wisdom. And almost seeing wisdom as this guide that is walking with us. I know I often take my journal out into my garden in the morning and sit and write and color and paint and so this imagery here, right, she will be found sitting at the gate to those that rise early. So I almost imagine as I go out into my garden and I'm spending that time really in creative meditation that wisdom is there with me. And wisdom is there with each of us. Whether we see this as a personification or this light within ourselves, wisdom is constantly there with us all we have to do is learn to listen and trust. I say all as though that is an easy task for us. It sounds so easy, doesn't it? Listen and trust. In the revealing word by Charles Fillmore, he defines wisdom, spiritual wisdom, as intuitive knowing, spiritual intuition, the voice of God within as the source of our understanding. So our goal is to learn to listen to this source of our understanding, to listen so that our lives are lived in accordance with the highest good for ourselves and for the world. Because as we are transformed, as we change our lives, as we begin to have more faith and trust in ourselves, we have faith and trust in each other. We see that good, that light, that spark of the divine, that wisdom of the divine within everyone else as well. And when we recognize that, even just looking around this room, take a moment, look around. As each one, each one of you truly comes into the knowing of the power of the divine wisdom within you and then takes action on that. This room alone to change the world, truly change the world. Because as each one of us is guided by what is in the highest good for ourselves, for our community, for this community, for the community around us, for our country, for the world, each one of us lights that spark and moves forward with guided action. Not, I think I should do this because somebody else said so, or the newspaper said this, but when we are guided from that light, that is the highest light, and we are acting in the highest good for all, amazing things can happen. So when we allow wisdom to guide us, we live 
in our highest, highest and best. Just as Jesus exemplified living that Christed life, we do the same by living guided constantly by wisdom. Charles Fillmore also wrote this uh, on wisdom. In spirit, intuition, and inspiration bring the quick and sure answer to all problems of life. All problems. Intuition, judgment, and wisdom are natural to us. These belong to us by divine sonship. So spiritual wisdom is always available to us if we listen and trust. So what is mine to do, right? We often ask this question of ourselves, whether it is, you know, uh, what should I have for breakfast? (laughs) Or uh, what's the next thing that I should do in my career? What's the next thing I should do to better support my family? A loved one who's going through a hard time. What is mine to do to aid in the evolution of the power of love around me? We ask this question, what is mine to do? And again, instead of reaching out and looking for those answers, I invite you to look within because that is where we will find the answers that are right and true for ourselves. So first, center yourself. Center yourself in the truth and in your own wisdom. And in that way, you are guided absolutely, positively in the right and perfect way. So often, that answer is right there. And many, many times in each of our lives, we have had this experience where we've felt that knowing that truth, that this is what I should do, and take an action sometimes, sometimes not take an action. And then we're able to discern, right? What did that feel like when I took the action? What did it feel like when I didn't take the action? Think on a time where you took the action, where you listened to wisdom, where you followed through. If something comes to mind. Because the more that we pay attention and we say, thank you, wisdom, thank you, God, thank you, divine guidance for leading me on that path. When we can look back and see all the little steps that happened that brought about our good, that brought about the change we were looking for. We can say thank you. And every time we say thank you, we are saying yes to that happening more and more and more in our lives. When we acknowledge it, when we pay attention. So knowing that, the question then becomes, if I can remember these times where I have followed through on my intuition, and my intuition was spot on, and these amazing things happened, and it felt like everything that I did was like just perfectly aligned, right? That guidance sometimes that comes as that still small voice, a whisper. Now to hear that voice of divine wisdom, we have to get quiet and still. And by stillness, I don't just mean sitting still. You guys are doing a great job. (laughs) But we don't have to be sitting still to hear the voice of stillness. And in fact, sometimes we're sitting still, this might apply to somebody out there, and your thoughts are doing anything but stillness. (laughs) Yes, we're sitting here, and at the same time, we're thinking about Okay, who am I meeting for lunch later? What are we doing here? I need to call my mother. And then my great aunt needed me to pick something up on the way home. We're thinking about all of the other things instead of being truly here. We're allowing ourselves via our minds and our amazing power of imagination. Don't get me wrong. I love imagination. But sometimes it can take us out of the present moment. So when we are seeking that still small voice, we really need to get still in terms of stilling the mind. Because when our mind is so, so active, it won't hear that voice. The other thing that happens sometimes, at least for me, is that voice of intuitive wisdom comes through like a shout. It doesn't always act in subtle ways. I saw big head nod, yeah. You know, it's like I might be driving along on the highway and all of a sudden it's like, turn here! You know, it's like, get off! 
and I get off, follow the guidance, because I've learned to do this over the years. So I get off, stop at a gas station, rest a little while, turn on my GPS to find there was a major accident that just happened, you know, and now I can divert myself to a new path and I'm not going to be stuck on this freeway traffic for the next two hours. When those things happen, I'm like, thank you, thank you, thank you, right? Pay attention to it, notice it. So we notice the shouts. Although sometimes I might hear the shout and still ignore it and keep driving and then go, why didn't I listen, right? <laughs> but even that, even that moment when then I, I'm confronted with the traffic, I'm reminded of that power of intuition, that power of divine wisdom. So why don't we always listen to it? Because I know I don't always listen to it, even though I've worked really hard to pay attention as much as possible. But I don't always listen. And I think the biggest, easiest answer that I've come to understand for myself is one word, fear. Because when that inner voice tells me to do something, I, Jen, question it sometimes. I question what will other people think if I follow that path. I question, is that really me having this thought? Like, is it my inner wisdom or is it me because I really want to do that thing? Like, I question it. There's this fear. There's this, what if I do that? And it's so very different from this path that I'm currently on. And then I'm going to realize I made a wrong turn somewhere. Or again, I go back to that, what will people think if I? And oftentimes, my inner wisdom guides me away from what seems like the logical choice. And I want to bring this back to some of our greatest spiritual teachers. If we look at Jesus, we look at the life of Buddha, if we look at any major spiritual teacher that has ever lived, they went against the norm. They went against what probably those around them would have advised. If they had done a Facebook poll, hey, should I start doing this teaching next? Chances are people would have said, no, don't do that. You're going to get ridiculed. You're going to get in trouble. People are going to be harassing you for trying to stand out. And yet each one of them made an amazing contribution to the consciousness of humanity. And as we step into our own truth and we learn to listen to divine wisdom and shoo off that voice of fear, whether it is our own fear or our fear of what somebody else is going to think, and usually that's what it comes down to, when we learn to ignore, bypass, step over and say, my spiritual knowing is higher than my human knowing. And it's higher than your human knowing and your human knowing. I'm going to trust spirit. And Jesus, oftentimes in the scripture, we see him go apart to pray. Like daily. Every time, right? There's a big thing that happens and then he goes apart to pray. Why? Because it's in that stillness that he hears the voice of God that he had such an intimate connection with that knowing, that spirit that he called God Father. And that each one of us can have that same deep, intimate connection with spirit. And now I know some of us are hardwired to ignore our parents or to do exactly what they tell us not to do. Um, but I think when we trust spirit, at that level, right? I mean, how many times, I'm, I'm going to say this for myself, and maybe it's you too, how many times did our mothers tell us to bring a coat, and we were really, truly, deeply glad that we brought the coat? Um, I know my son is still, he's 14, right? He's in that stage. If I say, don't forget your coat, oh, mom, right? <laughs> like the eye roll, the head roll, and he leaves his coat, and then we're out somewhere, and he's doing this, and I'm all inside going, oh, should have brought your coat. <laughs> but I still love him. Just as, as spirit, right, when we don't bring the coat, when we don't listen, we're still loved. We are still worthy. And that next step that we take, even if I get off and I get back into that line of traffic because I didn't pay attention to the voice of wisdom, if I then say, okay, I hear you now, 
give it to me one more time, where should I go from here? I'm going to get the next type of guidance, right? Wisdom's not going to like shut down because I didn't obey the first time. I didn't pay attention. The thing is that we have this gift. So really, we can work to develop it. The biggest thing is to acknowledge it. Acknowledge when wisdom shows up. Say yes, say thank you. Let me have more of that. Let me lean into that and trust myself and trust those around me to tell them about this. So I brought my journal with me. I'm going to go back to it here for a moment because my journal is a place where I still myself. And I still myself literally with crayons and watercolor paints. The things that I can buy at like the craft supply store, um, this is done with watercolors in the background and crayons, uh, cutting out magazine pictures, a reminder in this case to forgive, whatever the message was that I needed. So what I tend to do is use my time with my journal to center myself. Because even that wash of watercolor paint, it stills my mind. Because now all I'm thinking about is I'm putting brush to water, to paint, to page. And all those other things of what am I doing later today, they start to just kind of drift away. Art can bring us into the flow, into the present moment. And it's not, this is not high-end art, right? I'm not going to go put this on a gallery wall somewhere. It's just about being present with the materials. And then, you know, making a mess, playing with craft paints. But then after I get through that first layer, I am able, I'm still enough to listen. Sometimes it takes me pen writing out all the things, right, that I feel aren't going right, <laughs> or all the questions that I have, all of the things that I want to acknowledge, to be present to. And then this amazing thing happens every single time. If I ask for wisdom on the page, and sometimes quite literally writing it out like a letter, what should I do next? What should I do about this? Where should I go here? What should I speak about on Sunday? The answer comes through like that. Every single time that I ask a question to wisdom, I get an answer. And if I write it on a page, or in this case, write collage, um, if I start writing things down, I have a place not only to jot it down so that I don't forget, but then when I do that step that's that follow-up step, and I recognize, hey, look, that led me to where I wanted to be, or that intuitive wisdom was right, I still have it written down. So when that little voice inside goes, oh, no, no, you didn't really have that idea. That wasn't really intuitively guided. That wasn't really you tuning into spirit. You're thinking about it wrong. I can go back and go, yeah, it was, right? I can remind that inner critic that likes to tell me that I don't have these connections, that God's not right there with me all the time. It's my humanness, right, that, that gets me caught up sometimes in that loop. And when I have it written down, it becomes this capture of the truth, and it becomes a capture of my spiritual journey. Now, you might have crayons laying around at home. You might have uh, your grandkids' crayons uh, somewhere around. You can make a quick stop at the craft store, pick up something, or you can do something like this with a pen. Really, it's just about being present. Now, I know to some of you, you might be thinking, isn't that just talking to yourself? And isn't talking to yourself a little crazy? Anyone have that thought? But I want to bring you back to some of our core principles. There's one power and one principle. One presence active in the universe and in my life, and that is God. That spirit of God, of goodness, of truth, of love. Is all that there is, and that spark of God exists within me. So when I'm talking to myself, I'm talking to God, right? So if you ever, you know, you find yourself in the mirror going, hey, what should I do next? It's okay. It's okay. We can ask. And the truth is that when we ask, right, by first going apart, going to that space of stillness, whether it's in a forest, whether it's in an art journal, wherever it is, when we allow ourselves to move into that space, we know that divine wisdom is always, always there with us. 
each and every one of us all the time. So I'd like to close with an affirmation. I have faith in God's wisdom to guide me. I invite you to say this with me. I have faith in God's wisdom to guide me. And so it is. Thank you all. I'd like to invite Stephanie back up. As we move now into music. Spirit divine, open my eyes that I may see visions of truth thou hast for me. Open my eyes, illumine me, Spirit divine open my mind so i can hear wisdom within i trust is clear open my mind i know you're near spirit divine Open my heart so I receive. Believe in creating what life weaves. Eyes, mind, and heart embrace all three. Spirit divine. Breathe in, breathe out. Create the calm, be still and know that I am God. Breathe in, breathe out, Shh. take the time. Spirit divine. Mm. Let us take this time for time of inner contemplation, a time of inner stillness as we move into meditation. I invite you, if it is comfortable, to close your outer eyes, to feel your feet flat on the floor, to take in a deep cleansing breath, let it out nice and slow. Take in another breath, full and deep. Exhaling slowly. We bring ourselves to a place of stillness. A place where we can hear the still, small voice of inner wisdom. With each breath, we allow ourselves to be ever more present to the gift of the light of spirit within. Breathing in, breathing out, we allow ourselves the moment to rest in the silence and to listen for divine wisdom.
divine wisdom guides my way. When I listen and trust, I am led exactly where I need to be. Allow this affirmation of truth to sink into your body as we begin to bring this awareness to our mind moving our awareness back into our body wiggling your fingers and toes and opening your eyes and seeing through the light of divine wisdom in you the gift of divine wisdom, we say thank you, Spirit. Amen. Now, this is the part where you participate. For those of you that know me, you know the last song is audience participation. So, if you're willing and able, please stand and join me. And I mean that literally. Smiling doesn't hurt either. It makes you feel better. Sometimes in our lives, we all have pain. We all have sorrow. But if we are wise, we know that there's always tomorrow. Lean on me. When you're not strong, and I'll be your friend, I'll help you carry on, for it won't be long till I'm going to leave somebody to lean on. Please swallow your pride if I have things you need to borrow for no one can feel those of your needs that you don't let show lean on me when you're not strong and i'll be your friend i'll help you carry on for it won't be long till i'm gonna Somebody to lean on. Just call on me, brother, when you need a hand. We all need somebody to lean on. I just might have a problem that you'll understand. We all need somebody to lean on. Lean on me when you're not strong. I'll be your friend, I'll help you carry on, for it won't be long till I'm gonna need somebody to lean on, lean on me. We keep jamming, hey, we keep jamming, we keep jamming. We keep jamming, we keep jamming. One more time, we keep jamming. We keep jamming. Call me when you need a friend. Oh yeah, just call me. Call me, call me. Call me, a couple more times, call me. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you, Stephanie. Well, as we don't just dial it in, but call it in, this is our time for our ushers to come forward for our time of calling in thanks. So I invite you to join me as we hold our gifts to this community in our hands and love in our hearts as we affirm together divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And so it is. And as the love offerings collected, let's join Holly in singing, Thank You for This Day. And as our ushers come forward, here's our prayer of thanks as we listen. We are grateful and we bless the flow of good that supports our unity community. We bless the givers who give their time, talent, and treasure. We stand in the knowing that the flow of good goes forth only to return again and again. And so it is. Amen. Well, a special welcome to our guests today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for being part of this wonderful day. And if you'd like more information about the Unity Movement and Unity of Lawrence, there's information in the foyer just for you. And we welcome you. We also welcome you to our lunch bunch. They're going to the Jade Garden at 1410 Castle Drive, just up the road. All are welcome. And our drumming circle is meeting this afternoon at 1.30. So you can join in, bring your own drum, just come and listen to that beat within. And there are extra drums. And let's welcome our board vice president, John Pryor, to give a report. Well, thank you, thank you, and thank you, everyone, for the lovely service. Um, as you know, a month ago, our board president stood up here and talked to you about some things that happened at our board at our board meeting. Thank you. Can you hear me now? Uh, sorry about that. Um, we have our board meeting the third Wednesday of every month, and. We've decided to share what we talked about with you to keep, help keep you informed on what's happening in our Unity community. And one of the things I need to share, that's kind of sad for us, but great for her, I'm sure, is that Reverend Edna, who's been our spiritual advisor for the past two years, since we haven't had um, a regular minister, is stepping down. And we are so grateful to have had her. She has been fantastic. I can't say enough about how she's guided us and helped the board through all of this. And we, are, we will be looking for another spiritual advisor. Um, the reason we have to do this is to maintain our national accreditation with the Unity Ministries worldwide. 
Also, our finances, we're doing very well. We're, last week, we were 92% to go for our month, and that is always a great place to be. We want to thank you all for uh, participating. And also, wanted to share that the board has made a decision to have an intention to have the mortgage paid off completely as soon as possible. And one of the ways we're doing that is we're looking at this uh, a meditation through a book called The Power of Eight. And if you want to read the book or if you've, you've heard of it, it basically talks about how eight people getting together and focusing their intention can bring about great change. And so the board is going to be doing that with the intention of getting our mortgage completely paid off. And then finally, um, the board is talking about what to do with the grounds. If you've noticed that some of the uh, flower patches and things like that have a lot of weeds in them, etc., and it's just really difficult to uh, get that maintained. So we're talking about options um, like ripping some of it out and making it just grass or uh, planting things that are less liable to need constant care. So if you have any ideas about that or any input you'd like to give, please see myself or one of the boards after the service. And that's all I've got. Thank you so much. Thank you, John. The great eight, divinity and infinity. We thank you for your service. What a powerful thing. Well, speaking of service and opportunities, this Friday is a fabulous opportunity to wash yourself in with sound and music. Avery, if you would hit that, it's this Friday coming up. Hi, I'm Matt Venuti, and I'm here to introduce you to a very unique performance opportunity that I call the Ultima Zone. Live music itself is one of the portals into this magical zone, but if the venue has projection capabilities, I improvise music to stunning and majestic video footage that I've captured from years of touring the country. In 2019, I was the artist in residence in both Florida's Everglades National Park and Virginia's Shenandoah National Park. And these two experiences, plus years of collecting footage throughout the U.S., makes for a visual feast for the senses. Some of the instruments that I play include the eight octave range wind synthesizer called the electronic valve instrument, and also the Hung, H-A-N-G from Bern, Switzerland, an amazing sound sculpture. by a friend of mine that almost sounds like a crystal bowl but has its own uniquely beautiful characteristics.
off lights. I'll turn them back on. <laughs> Thank you, Avery. And so that's this Friday, July 29th at 7 p.m. Suggested donation of $20 at the door. So you can see the poster in the foyer for more information and for the video link to a preview of the Ultima Zone. And it's being shown before Sunday services, so you can come early and see more about that. And so, a couple of other things. We've got lots going on this week, but it is back to school time, and we have a chance to donate school supplies for this year. There's a list in the foyer and a tub at the back of the sanctuary, so you can support our kids. Actually, it's a box back there in the foyer. Yeah, by the door. And you can come early and join us Sunday mornings, not only for a reminder of Matt's concert. Well, actually, next Sunday, he'll already have been here. But um, Sunday mornings for a time of fellowship at 1030 AM downstairs. Our weekly meditation group meets on Tuesdays at 630 in the sanctuary. And please join us next Sunday when Karen Langsford brings the message what about Will? Who's Will? Special music with Tim Behrens. And now our youth are waiting, so let's sing them in together. You are walking in the light, in the light, and the light. You are walking in the light, in the light of God. And the light, in the light, in the light, in the light, in the light. Good morning, everyone. So today was just me and Izzy, which if you guys know, Izzy's my favorite. So today was a super fun day. Um, Izzy doesn't like talking in front of everyone, but we worked on our confidence a lot this summer, and I'm really impressed. And if I'm being honest, all we did was finish a puzzle we've been trying to finish since the beginning of summer. But I think Izzy deserves a round of applause for her confidence. Thank you, Izzy, for sharing your light. And we're all a puzzle just waiting for the next piece. So congregation, if you'll rub your hands together and let us bless our youth saying, we love you, we bless you, we appreciate you, and we behold the divinity in you. It's okay. I can do it. Do you want me to do it? Okay. It's coming from your unicorn, okay? We love you. We bless you. We appreciate you. And we behold the divinity in you. Good job, Izzy. Thank you, Izzy. Okay. All right. And let's now join in our peace song together.
lower our hands, let us say our prayer of protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God washes over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is swell. Thank you, Avery.